Happy Easter everyone and this is my Easter tablescape. I filmed this for TikTok um, and I put it all together on there. I did one of these myself and then this one was already pre-planted because I think everything looks better when it's had a bit of a drink. So this has got garden mint, uh, rosemary, thyme, then we've got some black peppermint, some saxifraga, some more thyme and some more garden mint. Just because I say it in the TikTok, but I'm not hugely into Easter decor. And I wanted to do something that first of all, wasn't just gonna need to be taken away after Easter. Um, just because it's not one of those ones that I get really excited to decorate for. I'm more excited de to decorate for spring and seeing as like herbs are generally one of the first things to come up in the kitchen garden. This just feels so good. And then with also like lamb being a real sort of focus of Easter lunch, I thought the mint and the rosemary would be such wonderful touches to have on the tables. They smell incredible. And I love that you are able to pick the mint, add some to your water, pick some thyme, add it to your, your lamb or add some mint and thyme to your lamb, whatever you want. And I popped to Dalesford the other day and I managed to get the herb candle. I would say, that there are herbier candles out there, but I do really like it. Still up there, I think that everything that Dalesford does is exquisite, but um, I'd say my candles, the, the Diptyque one and the Seertrudon one, they definitely have more of a herbier feel to it. Um, I've also used some, used some sort of greeny greyish tapered candle that you can't actually see uh, from West Home Interiors. These are also my candlesticks from Dalesford as well. Um, little sprigs and some the set linen and an old H&M stone linen uh, table runner that I've scrunched up. Ken has just left as well. It's his second day painting the en suites. I got it wrong. I thought he was gonna be painting the bedroom as well, but he is right. There's too much stuff in there. We need to get the bathrooms fitted first and then um, move everything out and then paint that room. It is the last room to be painted on this floor. If I don't decide to paint the living room green, that is. I mean, seeing as he's got to come back to paint one room, I don't know whether I should do it. I feel like the black walls are now, we could go with something else, but the botanist, oh my goodness, it is so perfect in there and I'm already like finding bits and pieces to go on that, I'm very, very excited. So yes, it is all coming together in there and I think that by the end of next week when I get back from Italy, we're gonna see a lot of progress. But my mum and her boyfriend are currently on their way up here. We're gonna have Easter lunch together at my house and just enjoy some good food and a good chat because we've got another day off tomorrow. I can't quite believe that we've been this lucky to have another, like we've had four days. <laughs> it's so good. Speaking of the living room, I have also added some little bits and pieces um, into here just to add some spring flair. Um, I haven't had a chance to do a spring install just yet. So um, I just generally, in those times, I go to the garden center and pick up some little things that I like. Saxifraga is always one that I love. I love when it's a bit more leggy as well. It just looks really delicate, almost like blossom, but in a little pot. And I've also done a big pot of the saxifraga over here. I always feel like this just, an injection of Delicate potted plants always makes such a beautiful difference in a room. It just breathes life in. It's so fantastic. So if you're like, if you're not someone that wants to do big spring installs like me, just go to your garden center or your local nurseries and pick up like a varied assortment of sizes of plants and things like that. If you've got pots laying around, I almost find like the, the more assorted and mismatched and old the better in my opinion these two hooligans are back to full health except hello little tonight matthew i'm gonna be barclay found a dead rabbit yesterday proceeded to eat the dead rabbit then throw it up and go back for seconds and porter decided to go back for seconds as well so i've had to oh there's been many tellings off but we're just happy that they're back to themselves. But this is what Barclay's like. Barclay, yeah, okay, you disappear under there. The way his little body. <laughs> you too. What did I do? Oh, you come back out. You didn't like it under there. Little, little naughty sausages. Now, these are the most special seeds that I have. 
they're the most important, money can't buy them, and I have to take extra special care with them. So these are the seeds that Ali's cousin's wife harvested from Gramps' tomatoes. These were the tomatoes that were the last thing that Ali's Gramps ever gave me. And he was always giving me bits and pieces for my kitchen garden. And so to be able to keep growing these every year is quite, is, is something I want to continue. I feel like just keeping that thread of Gramps through the garden will just be a nice way of making it feel like he's still here a little bit. So these are very special um, and I'm going to take extra care so I think I'm going to try and germinate them in my seed sprouter just so that I can keep an eye on them. Um, and I've got some more mousse seeds, these are the nasturtium cherry rose, um, so I'm going to try and sprout these in my sprouter over the next few days. I don't sprout everything in my sprouter but um, it, it just gives me this opportunity that I'm able to keep an eye on things a little bit better so as not to, I don't know, like I think sometimes when you put things in the ground you've just got no idea of what's going on so I want to keep an eye on these seeds because they are super super special. Probably a bit late for doing my tomatoes if I'm being completely honest but you know it is what it is. So we have a few, so I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to do... I'm going to do that many. Keep them safe. Pop the little stop cocks on. Ooh. Do the nasturtiums. Do you know what? I might give these nasturtium seeds a little bit of a scrape with a nail file. I don't know if this even works with nasturtiums, but they've got quite a tough exterior like me <laughs> and um, sometimes just giving them a bit of a scratch just helps them germinate a little bit more they do it with sweet peas as well I don't know if they do it with nasturtiums but we'll find out that is my gardening journey I just try things on my own and see what happens I think that's the best way to learn nasturtium cherry rose and guamps tomatoes now I always use warm water Well, apologies, you can hear the sound of the farmer on the fields at the moment, but I'm in my greenhouse because it is like 60 minute bloomin' makeover at my house today and it is so exciting. At the end of the day, you are going to be able to see, for the most part, almost finished bathrooms. So the plumber is getting all of the sanitary wear in today, which is actually blowing my mind. I did not imagine today, it's actually really funny the Tyler messaged me last night and he was like, is it okay if we come in tomorrow because it's a bank holiday today? And I was like, well, Ken's coming in tomorrow, but I was like, I'm not gonna say no. So they're all in there. The Tyler, the plumber, Ken, Graham, all of them are in those tiny little bathrooms, putting them to work basically. And it is moved, it is moving so fast. <laughs> Even I am in shock. So Ali is gonna come home and see such progress. I'm, I'm actually a little bit um, excited about all of this. So I'm hiding in the greenhouse because I just want to be out of the way and then once they're gone, I'm just going to jump in there and show you everything. The floor, I can breathe, I can breathe a sigh of relief with it because um, the colours that I've chosen, everything has worked out. I'll pop my little vision boards and my, my planning to the side so that you can see them. And then I'll show you the bathrooms as they are uh, at the end of the day. So it is just too exciting. But tomorrow I need to pack for um, a trip to Italy. So really, really nice. I'm um, going to Italy to shoot my summer, spring, summer, sort of end of spring, early summer campaign for Karen Millen. And um, we're going to Italy. We're going to Lake Maggiore. So really, really exciting. And the, the location that we're shooting was actually recently featured in Condé Nast Traveller. So it's exceptionally beautiful. Can't wait to show you that. But I am going to be packing tomorrow, which means that I can enjoy this bank holiday a little bit. Uh, just chilling, basically. I've been editing this morning, but I am going to take the afternoon off. And I think I'm going to go to the pub with Carrie and her boyfriend. If you haven't realised, Ali's actually not here at the moment. He is... Um, He's in like Costa Rica, Bermuda. He's working on a really cool campaign with the Ritz Carlton. And he is 
on their yacht doing incredible things. So I've had the bank holiday with my family. I've seen my dad, I've seen my mum, and now I'm gonna see Carrie again. Um, I was supposed to go down to see my non that today, but because we've got a full house and I'm the only person here, I can't leave the guys in the house because they wouldn't be able to lock up. Even though it's Ken, <laughs> they, they wouldn't be able to lock up on their own. So unfortunately I've had to stay here. I always love that I've got this little greenhouse to retreat to. So um, all is lovely. I can update you from here and I'm gonna do a little bit of seed sowing as well. I've got some runner beans that I'm gonna get in. These are for indoor sowing from April to May. So I'm gonna do a few of these as well. Get some runner beans out there. And also the most wonderful thing, I'm gonna insert a picture here because Carrie FaceTimed me this morning and she's been sowing seeds and you have no idea how excited that makes me. If Carrie was to learn to garden and to like garden together, I think, I said in a recent TikTok that I don't, there's only one thing that I love more than um, gardening and that's gardening with wine. I would say that I would love gardening with wine and my best friend more. So there's not actually just one thing. <laughs> it would be with my best friend. So I'm gonna get these in the little seed trays. Do a bit of dibbing, do a little bit of uh, sewing. And I'm so happy that I've got these seed trays all laid out, ready to go. It makes my life so much easier. I was going to pinch out my sweet peas, but I think I'm just gonna give them a little bit longer to establish themselves. Um, so instead, I've thrown some carrot seeds in one of the beds, so hopefully they will come up soon. But what I was going to do was organize my seeds. This is a little Dalesford uh, tin, and it was a gift from Elizabeth Arden. It came with a bottle of Rosé Frizzante, um, my ceramide day cream and also the ceramide capsules. Now, I've told you a lot about that cream, so I felt like <laughs> it probably isn't best. I've, I haven't shut up about it since it came into my life and I, I was very lucky to work on it, but you know that that cream is my favorite cream at the moment. So, <laughs> but I'm gonna use this tin because I've got currently a very small Dalesford tin on the go. And I reckon I could use this for something different. And I actually think that this will be really good for seed organization um, in general. And I've also got this one, which is also a little bit rusty. So I thought I would organize this one too. <laughs> Some of these seeds are probably out of date, but never mind. Can you see little Lumi? Just there. <laughs> Always in my greenhouse with me. <laughs> yes, you're in the right as well. Yes, you are. You okay? You okay? Your breath smells of cat food. It does, it smells of cat food. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Love the greenhouse. Now, if anyone hears me say that I need to buy more seeds, don't let me. Right, I'm going to sow some microgreens into these pots just because I've got some mustard ones and I thought it'd be a good idea. The pheasants are out in full force today. Yeah, I've got these little red giant mustard, so thought we should do these, some little microgreens. I'm currently secret squirreling down to the guest bathrooms to show you the update. Oh my goodness, 60 minute makeover. I'm gonna shut this window because it's cold. So obviously not finished, but progress nonetheless. Oh my goodness. They were supposed to get the towel rail on today, but they just need one more part. But this apparently works. Oh my goodness. We have a working toilet as well. Oh my goodness, the dream. And 
you on here, I can give you a bit of an idea and an idea for myself how this will look at some point. So this will be up there like so. I'm going to pop it here so that you guys can see it. Try not to mark the wall, but there will be these like little buttons across. The lights are being changed in here as well. Um, and there'll be a sill on here. Oh my goodness, it's gonna look so good. In fact, we can kind of put it here and you get an idea too. But yes, so that is what that looks like. I am over the moon with the colour as well. Um, the colour looks so rich. Once we've got the lights in here, when it's all finished, it's going to look wonderful. A little bit of Aesop in there to just, just to connect this rich colour into the shower as well. Maybe a little natural sponge, all of the good stuff. This will obviously be fixed onto here as well. We've got a working toilet. And then this is where the towel rail will be. And then into the piece de resistance. Obviously not finished as well. <laughs> um, these are the little baskets for storage. We're going to have some towels stacked on there. The floor is a work of art. Um, one thing we did have to lose was the shutters. They didn't fit on, but what I'm actually gonna have done because I want to get more fabrics into this room, but I don't want a blind because the blinds just don't work. You just end up with them down all the time. So what I'm gonna do is a little like half height curtain. Um, so if you're sat on the loo, you can have the curtain closed. And I think that'll look really, really cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. So in here, we've actually, in here, we asked for the same tongue and groove as in our kitchen. However, it's a bit of a cheaper one and I love it. I think Ali isn't going to love it. I love that it's got all of these nooks and knots. Um, personally, I think it looks more rustic. It looks, looks less perfect, but I know that Ali will probably have something to say about it. We've got wall lights, the artwork that's gonna go up in here. In fact, I'm gonna show you what the wood will look like in here as well, because even though it is not finished, like honestly, this is my green celebration. Even though it's not finished, a bit of an idea on the wall like so so this will there'll be one beam at the top one down the side one down there and all of these little joists and bits and pieces the lights will obviously sit either side oh I love it so much I did it all myself I'm so blooming proud <laughs> proud as blooming punch I tell you you probably couldn't see anything on that because you're too low, but anyway, if it isn't, I'll do it again. I'm getting my full DIY on today. Busy house as well because um, we've got the wildflower turf going on in front of the archway, which should be lovely. I treated myself to some Amazon um, little wall light lampshades because I'm trying to DIY them um, using the silt paint because I think that that colour would look really lovely as a contrast mm. to the green. Porter is currently in jail because they're working in the garden and someone has been telling everybody off this morning. So he's in the hallway. Porter above. Barkley being good as gold, Porter never satisfied with whatever situation he's in. Um, but I bought these to practice. If one works out, that's great, but generally I think I'd want it on more of like a linen. These are super cheap. They came as like a pack of six. And I basically bought some stencils and bits and pieces like that because I wanted them to be more botanically. I have searched high and low for some like mauve colored wall sconces that are like a nice mauve, not like a purple mauve. And not easy to find. So I thought I'd try and DIY some some of them. Now, as you can see, the first attempt did not go well. It looks like someone's hand going like that. <laughs> so it didn't go well. I think I need to really stick down the stencil and be very, very gentle with it. 
Um, but the other thing that I'm doing is I'm going to be DIYing these picture frames onto my little pieces of artwork that I got at the Reclaimed Home Fair. This is a little viola and I bought these little frames from Rowan and Wren. Now they're just slightly too small, but in all honesty, I think I'm going to stick the frame onto the artwork because they're just, just perfect. And I like that it actually gives it a bit of depth. The only thing that I'm going to do is unscrew these little screws for the back because I won't need them because this will be the back. Um, which is where my little contraption from Mr. Young Gordon, my little screwdriver set, is going to come in so handy. And then I can literally just stick it on. And it means I've saved loads of money because I haven't had to take it to the framers. So it's lefty loosey, righty tighty. And they just come straight out. Oh my goodness. This is so good. This is so good. I'm doing this so slapdash, but we're going with it. I'm just going to do a line of Gorilla Glue all along the edge of the frame. Gosh, this stuff is sticky. All of the top interior designers do this. <laughs> As you can see, the little wildflower pathway is coming up. My goodness. Et voila. That is the finished framing of the two pieces of art. I got these from the painted room at the Reclaimed Home Fair in Chipping Norton. I also got a little foxglove one that is slightly bigger, so I might be able to use that um, somewhere else, but I'd need to find a different frame. But my goodness me, it looks so, so good. I actually feel like I've just had an absolute touch with these. Um, now I just have to decide where they're going to go on the walls, but oh, love it, love it, love it. I have also had a cheeky delivery of fresh Diptyque Le Droguerie um, surface spray. Yes, I bought two more. I'm going to use the spray bottle of the other one. Uh, in my greenhouse and I treated myself to this. You can buy refills and I am going to buy refills for these once these are finished. Uh, it's just I wanted the other spray bottle for my greenhouse because I like it. It's got a good spray and it's a pretty bottle. So, oh, love it. Also, I have just swapped over to a new camera. This is the G7X Mark III. If you remember, I didn't really get on with this camera, um, but it's been a few years and you can now no longer buy the G7X Mark II anywhere. You can get them on like eBay, char you'd be charged so much more. I have had to move because dealing with Porter at the moment is a nightmare. When there's people in the house and in the garden, he can't cope. But um, yeah, so we're gonna have to just deal with the, the camera that we have. I really didn't get on with this. I'm hoping that they've had like software changes and things like that, but we shall see. Um, yeah, you have to let me know what you're thinking and if you like it. I'm gonna go and try these on the wall in the bathroom if I can get in there because the tiler should be working in there at the moment. You are currently propped up on the Durgo. <laughs> but what I was thinking is these just staggered here like this or they could go here like sort of above there. Does that make sense? You have to like pop, can you see that? Very well, anyway. I was to like have two there. Oh dear me. I can tell I hate this camera already because it goes really dark when my face isn't in the picture. But they could go here, like so. There's so many places it could go here as well. Oh, this is really cute over here by the window. Everything just looks so nice on the walls in here. Go here. Oh, that is so cute. Oh, they can look so good everywhere. <laughs> what are we gonna do? We have finished tiles without the grout. As you can see up the top there, um, our tiler started grouting these tiles and realized very, although it's actually drying quite nicely. Hmm. 
I'm gonna come back and check because over here, it seems to be drying a bit lighter. Although I do think that we're gonna want it to be a white grout, but I really, like I had popped out, so I'm really happy that he stopped and didn't proceed because this wasn't what was expected. However, it may just mean that we have a white one or we go with this one. Regardless, we have what, I can't remember what he calls these. He has a special name for them, but I've brought <laughs> the soap for in here. Now I just need Bertioli to do body wash and like conditioner, body and hair wash and conditioner that will go in the bathroom because that is perfection for in here. It's the perfect little color for in that little um, nook there. Oh, you can tell I'm impatient and I just want to decorate in here and make it all pretty and lovely. Oh, uh, I don't know what that is. Quite oh, is that gonna be for a, I don't know what that's gonna be for. I think the other little nook in the other bathroom needs to be done as well. Um, but that will be done tomorrow. I'm expecting, inspecting the work and we have this lovely little pathway. This will actually be staying as it is because this is new turf, but we will be having another pathway that goes through here around so you can go up and inspect and look at the wall. Um, look, we've got a little valerium coming through now. The abrecia is doing its most, although not as flowery as last year. So we We've had a little bit less florals this year, probably environmental, but this is the little pathway that is going to go through and lead you in so you'll see the beautiful wildflower. So it's going to be lovely to be able to meander through and look at it. We're also having more put down there as well, but I have a funny feeling that whilst I'm away in Italy, our crab apples are going to bloom and I hate missing it. Oh, the garden is coming alive. Little first tulip there as well. Little lonesome tulip. It is time for my toes to come out of hibernation and they are getting a full pedicure ready for my shoot. They have not had a full pedicure. Oh my God, that smells amazing. What have you put in the water? Bath and where's that from? Blend Collective and what's the salts that you put in? Oh yeah, those are good salts. Right, this can go in. Actually, actually, hang on, hang on, hang on. Do <laughs> so many things to put on. Is this your secret weapon? What is that? Emma Hardy, rose hip exfoliating seeds. I have never seen this. But yeah, this is um, bougie. So basically, I'm just mixing a little bit of um, foot mask. I think it's just like a scrub. Wow. I bet that's expensive because it's in a small pot. Wow. Fresh manicure. And I haven't gone for my usual lady. I've actually gone for marshmallow this time. I went for marshmallow on my toes and on my hands. I love it. I love that it's barely there. I feel like it's one of those things that, that only looks good for a short amount of time, but then manicures just take, you know, they take a battering anyway, but I just love it. So fresh, so clean. Sadly, I haven't had a chance to fake tan today, so I am gonna have to do a light fake tan in the morning. However, I wanted to show you something. I know I've talked about um, those little art frames quite a lot in this vlog but i was sent this magazine this is the resurgence and ecologist magazine and this is a magazine basically dedicated to reconnecting with the living planet and i just had a quick flick through and i just instantly discovered a new artist in their magazine and one thing i wanted to say look at look at this it is so beautiful every time i see it it, it stops me in my tracks the artist is called Anna Chambers. Anna, Emma Chambers? Anna Chambers? Emma Chambers. I've just followed her on Instagram, but it's got that sketchbook feeling that we love. Sorry, the dogs are growling at each other. It's got that very evergreen um, sketchbook feeling that I absolutely love. There's just lots of little annotations all over it, but this is more of like a wildflower um, rather than like a botanical study. 
Um, there's nettles in there. And I'm just going to say that she sells prints of these and I will link her, her prints. I, I actually went looking for an original, to be honest, but they're all sold out. I would have loved this one as an original. Um, but, you know, if you're someone that maybe you can't always um, afford art, take a scalpel and just take this out and you can frame it and it'll look absolutely beautiful. And obviously she has been compensated for this going in the magazine. I think that's okay. I hope that's okay. I don't know if you're, you're allowed to do that, but it's perfect to be framed. So I'm just sort of like, it, it's, it's just gonna get lost in this magazine. I don't know. But that's one thing I often hear people say and it, it actually makes me quite cross. Um, when people say that, you know, magazines and journalism is redundant and it's so isn't, it so isn't. I am such a huge advocate for magazines, journalism, and it really, really, really frustrates me because it's such an important industry. And I've always said that our industry is really, like we do such different things. There is such an important role of journalists, magazines, and it makes me really upset when you hear of magazines going under, when you hear them going out of business, and when people celebrate that, that really, really upsets me because it is such an important industry. I find so many incredible brands and read so many important articles um, because of the magazines that I um, consume. Now, I would say there are different types of journalism and some of them, you know, the ones where maybe they're choosing to kick someone when they're down. I, I, I don't know whether that's my favorite type of journalism and maybe it's not the same one that I'm talking about now, but what I would say is that these more like focused to specific topics like this particular magazine, you know, fashion magazines, it's like those that I really, really think are super, super important. And even just discovering that artist today, I just loved it. So yeah, I'm really struggling with this camera by the way, because it doesn't have, it's just not doing what my old camera did and I just remember how much I hated the Mark III. It's just, it costs so much more money and it's just, it's just not as good as the Mark II. The auto brightness on it is just not good. Now, whilst I finishing off packing for my trip, I, I, I do want to get on the sofa and just cuddle with the boys, but I've got a few bits and pieces to show you because I've had some orders that have been sat in my dressing room for such a long time and I've not even got into them with you. So um, I do want to get them open before I leave so that we can sort of crack on, get my dressing room organised, that kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? I've also had this dress arrive from Mrs. Francois, but I think it's going to be too big. I'm going to try that one on first uh, with you. And then I'm getting into my first ever Reformation order. And look at how bad this brightness is. Anyway, I'm not gonna moan about it, but it just makes me really sad because they'd, they'd created the best camera and now they just haven't. Also, there's so many things flashing on this screen. It's so distracting for me. I don't know if that's like normal, but everything is flashing. It makes me think that the camera's gonna turn off any second. And it's so distracting. Anyway, I did my first ever Reformation order. And I bought some lovely dresses and some cute little summer bits and pieces because you just never know when it might get uh, <laughs> sunny in England. It kind of looks like my curtains in the kitchen. <laughs> but it's like a sand beige ticking stripe. And, oh, good evening. And I um, just wanted some lovely dresses, really, for summer. I know I've got lots of lovely dresses, but just some a bit more effortless, that kind of thing. So that's the first one. This is the... That's the dress it is, Lumi. That is the dress that it is. It's a good job you're here. The Balia linen dress. So it came in two orders, which I actually was not expecting. I think some came from America and some came, one came from England, I think. I did already open the box though, because I wanted that swimsuit. That swimsuit is amazing. So this is a, another dress, <laughs> a little white classic linen dress with a scoop back and covered buttons and a zip and all loveliness. And then I got a mini dress. I don't know why I was looking at my phone then as if it was you. I got this mini dress because I thought having a nice little cute mini dress for like walks in summer. You know, Carrie and I love a little mini dress. Wow, that is short. That is, that is, that is short. 
wow okay <laughs> they wouldn't that is a micro not a mini but i loved this because it's got this little lace detailing to the straps there as well it just looks really nice and delicate and also it's like a cute little blue little bodice there so i've got that one more white dresses because one thing i've realized this is the season of white and green dresses i mean i feel like that's every season so this one had cute little ruffly milkmaid sleeves and i thought this would be so pretty for spring summer and i loved the sort of high neck cross neck and again it's got that plain linen skirt little cute bow on there i just thought this would be really lovely this one uh, this one's going to be too big if i thought that the others <laughs> were big th i bought this in a size up and i may have to take it to be taken in this i got in a size in a us2 so but loved it, loved the simplicity of it. I think it's really, really lovely. Little scallop detailing around the lace detailing to the trim, classic white dress, perfect for tan accessories, which is basically all I wear. And then the last thing is another white dress, <laughs> which um, this reminded me of the dress from Under the Tuscan Sun. This is like a little wrap t-shirt dress. This is like a little wrap shirt dress, which, felt really lovely as well. So that's my little reformation haul. I'm gonna go and turn the beeping on and I'm gonna try everything on. But I need to try this one on first. Well, thankfully I tried on the the Mrs. Francois dress and I, I'm not gonna show you because it is definitely the wrong size and um, I know that her stuff is exquisite and I don't, I don't think I need to show the dress being too big for me because it's clearly a mistake. <laughs> However, the dress that I thought was not going to fit me the um, milkmaid sort of style dress fits me perfectly. This is the, the US 2 and I would usually go for a US 0. This is like a really, I mean I have just eaten two plates of pasta. So um, it may be different when I haven't eaten two plates of pasta. <laughs> but I think I might shove this in my suitcase just in case. I mean it's not going to be really warm in Italy. But this is a very comfortable dress. I feel very, very comfortable in this. Love it. In fact, I need to show you a little bit better because you're very, very high. Um, yeah, they do this in loads of colours as well and the fit is gorgeous. Just a very, very simple eyelet style little, it's like a square neck but with a slight curve, which I love. It almost like shows, do you know what this reminds me of? Those, the, the German, I can never say the word, they're like dirdle, drindle, dir, dir, please German followers. Um, correct me on how you pronounce it. Drindle? Durdle? I don't know. <laughs> but it reminds me of those dresses when they put the blouses underneath. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Weirdly, I know it's a different style, but this almost feels bigger than the other one. I'm actually really glad that I sized up in the other one. But this is really lovely. And again, it's super comfortable. But good to know there's not like too much in the sizing. Um, but this fits really nicely. You've got the little bow detail, very sort of like, um, what kind, of, this kind of reminds me of the dresses that um, the, la the kind of ladies in the olden times would wear when they were like, you know, walking across the fields and like, <laughs> I love it. I think it's really, really lovely. You'd have like a basket and you'd have probably a pail of milk or something like that. <laughs> I love it. Okay, next dress. So arguably, this feels almost like they've tried to remake the um, white sort of peasant style dress um, with this one, but less fabric in the skirt and not as special, but I do really like the back. I'm not going to do it up because I'll never get to bed if I do it up, but it's lovely. It's not as special as the other one, but I think I'd still keep it because I don't really want to pay the returns. And I've already paid customs on it, so yeah. Next dress. <laughs> this is so short. I actually can't believe how short this is. I don't even think I would be able to wear this on like a hike. It's that short. Maybe if I put a shirt over the top, um, it wouldn't feel quite so bad. And it does need a steam. But I actually can't, this is like shorter than my school skirt when I was at school. You know, you have like a Yankee skirt up. My school skirt wouldn't even be this short. <laughs> wow. Lovely with flats. I think if I was to wear heels with this, I'd feel like 
too much but it's such a beautiful dress i love the neckline of it it is really lovely so yeah it's just so short <laughs> okay i really love the neckline of this i think this is so so gorgeous such a nice structured neckline gorgeous amounts of fabric in the skirt but you know what i'm realizing reformation where are your pockets who who doesn't put pockets in any of their dresses i realized i've been going like this the whole time i've been trying this on like where are the pockets why why are there no what i mean you just would like come on this is like standard standard practice put your pockets in your dress like where am i supposed to hide my snacks where am i supposed to hide my patience if there's no pockets on the dress <laughs> but very lovely dress very very lovely but just um in need of a tweak I was a very smart cookie and brought up some fresh pajamas for me to put on and ready to go to bed. I didn't try on the shirt dress because I started putting it on and I realised that it just wasn't going to be as nice as my theory one that I got the other week. So I didn't put it on. I've doused myself in calendula oil just to give my skin a good like hydration overnight. I think that's gonna be really, really lovely. I just love moisturizing my skin. I'm trying not to, 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 to lean back because you will see the, um, <laughs> you'll see my areola and nobody needs to see that. So anyway, I am um, gonna go and get a dressing gown on and I'm just exhausted. I'm so tired today. I didn't sleep very well last night. So I'm gonna get myself a big glass of ice cold water and put the sausages to bed, I think so. Sorry, that was a bit of a slapdash haul to be honest, a bit of a strange one, but um, some really lovely pieces in there and some bang average, but the moral of the story is, if your dress hasn't got pockets, we've got a problem. Well, speaking of magazines, this is actually quite an old one. This is the January, February edition of Country and Townhouse that I bought in Waitrose that I actually haven't had a chance to enjoy yet. But then I've got the April um, English Garden magazine and then I picked up the Dalesford Seed magazine. Um, this is a book that has arrived for me as well, which sounds like it'll be very interesting. So I'm going to take this on my trip with me in my bag. Oh, I've got a pillow mist. This is the cow shed calming pillow mist. So I've just spritzed the bed and then I'm going to do 15 minutes. I'm going to do 15 minutes of red light and then 15 minutes of the blue light, just so that my skin is super clear for my shoot. And by that point, I should have made a good dent on some of the magazines and um be ready for bed if you see any mud marks on our bed that is lumi's paw prints okay nothing to do with me <laughs> oh dear honestly that calendula oil is like the most soothing oil for your skin i think maybe i was a bit overzealous in the sun today tomorrow's hair wash day so hair is in a hun bun and i'm going to pop this on like so mm -hmm. Where's my fun? Oh goodness me! <laughs> this is interesting, isn't it? Gosh, this looks delicious. The char grilled spring salad with poached egg. That would be such a good thing to make with the hen's eggs. And then we've got peas, asparagus, Broccoli, so simple and yet so delicious. Oh, that looks good. Pea and soft used cheese bruschetta. I'm not sure if you can hear, but it is exceptionally blustery today in the garden. I think we're in the midst of a storm and uh, I'm honestly, I, I can't believe how ferocious the winds are. I can definitely see some branches have come down. It feels very, very, very strange. And it's very loud. But I have some exciting news. And I hope that you will be as excited for me for this news as you would be if I got like 
I don't know, an email from the Hermes store because these are Gramps's tomato seeds that have germinated. They've germinated so well. Lisa did such an incredible job harvesting these. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got loads and I didn't even use all of the seeds. So what I want to do is get these into some nodules, get them in some water and some soil, get them some nutrients and just get them on their merry way. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we've got Gramps' tomato seeds. So in order to get my seedlings on their way, I'm gonna get some soil into these little nodules in here. Um, these are just a great place to get the tomatoes started. I'll then probably pot them on like once until they go out, just get them really leafy, healthy root system. And hopefully these are gonna do really, really well. So much so that I'm able to then harvest the seeds from the tomatoes this year and keep this line of Gramps' tomatoes just going strong throughout the years for as long as possible. I harvested my own Crown Prince seeds this year. I felt a little bit more confident doing those than the tomatoes because I thought if I didn't get these tomatoes right, um, then the tomatoes are gone. And so luckily uh, Ali's cousin's wife harvested the seeds and dried them out for me. Um, oh, the sun's gone in. I'm gonna go and get some soil in here and then start potting up. Goodness me, it is blowing a gale out there. But the soil is in. I never really sieve my soil um, too intensely. You can't even see what I'm doing. Let's see if I put it here. I don't really tend to sieve my soil. I like, I know that's a thing, but I'm like, time is money, people. <laughs> so I'm gonna give this a quick sprinkle of water uh, with the watering can so that this is damp through, and then I'll pop the seeds in so that it doesn't damage the seeds too much. Just generally what I've learned along the way. Get the jibber. So this is what one of the little seedlings looks like. I hope it focuses. I can't see anything, but that's the little seedling. And I'm just gonna gently curl its root into the hole. Go on, Sticky McStickerson. There we go. There we go. There's one little crooked guy in there. I'm gonna dip out the rest of them. Et voila, 10 little seedlings of Gramps' tomatoes. I'm gonna write the name on them. Goodness me, it is blowing a gale out there. But we have some exciting seedlings. We've got the Courgette Black Beauty coming up. You can see this little guy and this little guy. And also the Cut and Come Again lettuce. Despite being munched by the mouse that seems to just come and go in my greenhouse, um, we still have a lot of these coming up, which is great. I've also just potted on my Sweet Pea Royal White and pinched them out. If you don't know about pinching them out, you basically have to wait until your little seedling is about 15 centimeters tall or that it has four sets of leaves. Some of these were both of those things. Some of them were 15 centimeters tall, but didn't. I've just pinched them out. This one I did not pinch out because he's a little guy, um, but I have pinched them out and that means that the plant will bush up, it means you get more flowers, and if you take the little pinch out and pop it in water, you can also promote root growth from the pinch outs, which means that you get two sets of sweet peas, like sweet pea plants, for the price of one seed, which is good bang for your buck. Well, how lovely is it to see this room as it was before? Thankfully, it has all been tidied up and cleaned, and it is looking much better. We still obviously don't have the new headboard and we don't have the, the bolster. I have messaged to hopefully have this arrive this week. As always, I am not allowed to do anything in the guest bedrooms without these two. Come on, in you come. But I actually realise that this is probably a good point to do a bit of a sort of update um, with regards to where we are at in the guest bedrooms, what's next, what's been happening, just so that we're all up to speed because I know that there will be so many questions with regards to so many things and I think that it's always good to do a bit of a check-in. So, 
Where are we at with the bathrooms and the guest bedrooms? The last thing to be done is the guest bedroom walls to be painted. The doors need to be painted in the bathrooms and new handles fitted. The woodwork needs to be fitted. The shower screens need to be fitted and the last finishing touches of the paintwork and those kinds of things need to sort of come together. So just some finishing touches, like even now as I'm sat here looking in there, it just looks so lovely. Look at this view, they look so pretty. Obviously I'm waiting for all of the Jim Lawrence bits and pieces to arrive as well. So, so happy that we swapped the toilet and the basin. Such a simple change and yet super effective and yet super effective. I do think that we will be painting the living room. I do think that is going to happen. I've ordered some Edward Bulmer um, paint to arrive, hopefully soon. Um, I think that it's one of those things where it's like, I have loved having a black living room and I feel like that was such a style statement. I can't believe how many black living rooms exist in the internet now. Not that I invented it, but I do feel like when you see someone that's bold enough to do something, it almost makes you realise that it's quite, it's, it's just a bit of paint. And we've had that um, on our walls for nearly four years now. And I just like to brighten it up a little bit in there. So I'm thinking, I know I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something really different here and I know it's gonna really shock you, but I'm thinking about painting it green. Um, I just think that thread through, especially from the kitchen to the, to the living room will be really lovely. I also want to paint the windows green as well because just like when we painted them in the kitchen, it really makes that inside outside space so much more cohesive and more fluid. To me, it is just a bit of paint and I really enjoy this process. I think you will have seen in me how differently I've been this time with regards to um, what's been happening and the disruption. I think once you get your mind in a really good space, you realize the things that you enjoy but you never allowed yourself to enjoy. And that's definitely how I feel about the, the sort of renovation process that I found myself in for the last six years. Um, I very much wanted to have a beautiful home when we first moved in and I didn't really know what my style was. I didn't, I, I knew what I wanted to create. I didn't know how to do it. Um, and it was all very confusing. And what would happen is, is we would start a project. I wouldn't really have much direction. I would make mistakes. It would play out on the internet. I would then be, to some point, I remember stumbling across someone else's Instagram and there were so many people that were choosing to um, on someone else's Instagram post speak about me and how I was renovating my home and how it was unrealistic and all of this kind of stuff and I remember actually there was someone that, that commented that I was actually I really loved following them and it was such an interesting thing to see them make the things that I was doing in my life almost something that was about them and it just, it just never, it never was. I was someone that was making mistakes and sharing them online, but I didn't know how to communicate that I was making mistakes. I think I, because I'm such a benefit of the doubt person, I always thought that people would give me benefit of the doubt. And we're just, it's just different types of people. Some people give benefit of the doubt and, and some people don't. Now I'm much more competent in being able to understand when I've made a mistake and how to, ensure that it doesn't happen again and planning and executing and having my little silly little mood boards that I have where I put the colors together. First of all, I find them super quick. I know that interior designers put together these sorts of, sort of trays and things like that. I don't usually have the time or the patience to wait for things to arrive. I'd probably make less mistakes um, if I did that. But now I found that this is a really good option for me doing these little mini mood boards that I can just do on my phone and they work really, really well. What I have learned is also that everybody around you doubts you until it's finished. And this is where, I, if I could give you one piece of advice that I've learned from doing homes, if you like something, make sure that you are comfortable with it before you start and before you tell anyone about it. Because what I have learned with everything, absolutely everything that I have ever undertaken with this house, people second guess me all the time and it instantly makes me go oh god i don't know even now ali loves the green bathroom he's not so sure about the bronze bath bathroom but i know that once that bathroom is finished 
it's going to be the exact gentleman's bathroom that he wanted. Because we've used like the leftovers of, of floors, he would have loved to have had the cobble bath floor in there, but we didn't have it. Um, so that's my one piece of advice to you is really plan your spaces in the way that you would want them to be so that you so that when people go oh I'm not sure about that you you are completely and utterly confident in what it is that you are trying to execute because over the years when I've been doing things like the gate walls and I had these ideas and people would go oh I'm really not sure about that and I'd go okay and I'd back down no so anyway, that's definitely one of my, my pieces of advice on this. So when the spaces aren't finished and they're kind of sat there and you don't really know what's going on, it can be very, very confusing when people second guess you. So those are the bits and pieces that are required to be finished off in this section. And I am treating myself as a birthday gift to myself. I'm going to be painting the living room in a shade of green because I haven't asked for anything this year. I know I'm a 36, gonna be 36 year old woman and I shouldn't be asking for, for birthday gifts, but that's gonna be my birthday gift because at the moment I haven't got, I haven't chosen anything fancy. Once that is done, so once Ken and all of those people are finished on this floor, that will be this floor completed. What I understand that is happening next in the house, we're not actually going down into the lower ground floor. And if you don't know, our lower ground floor is where our games room is, our gym is, my office is, and there is also a bathroom down there. We're not going, going down there just yet. We are actually gonna do the bathroom on our um, dressing room floor, which is basically two bedrooms. It used to be the kids' bedrooms, but we took them and made them into dressing rooms for now. Uh, but they are very easy to be ripped out and made back into bedrooms. So the house is a five bedroom house um, with six bathrooms. And, um, but we just have the two dressing rooms because for our work, we needed that. Um, that bathroom desperately needs doing. It is the last bathroom with the sparkly tiles. And when I tell you that will be like a cleanse for my soul when that is gone. So I have one more bathroom to um, design. And I am excited to start planning that. I think I'll start planning that this weekend and have a little bit of a think about what it is I'm gonna do in there. Um, I'm gonna look for the little cloak. It's like a cloak room really, but with a shower. So I'm gonna have to have a little bit of a, so I'm gonna have to have a little bit of a think about what we're gonna do in there. Maybe I'll do something, I don't know. We'll see. Once that bathroom is done, we will have two completed floors in this house, which is when we will go down to the lower ground because the lower ground is a big, big project. It is the entire footprint of the house and it is going to be the entire floor coming up and being redone in herringbone bricks. And that is gonna be a huge project, but the amazing thing about it is that part of our house has its own entrance because it has the courtyard outside. We have doors that the, the workmen are able to use, a staircase, it has its own entrance. So it's going to be completely, completely blocked off and that floor will just be separate from the house, which I think is gonna be very interesting to undertake it in that way. Now, I know that the question on everyone's lips, which I always feel like I have answered a hundred times, is always going to be, are you still looking to move? And the reality of it is, is that yes, we are. We have acknowledged that we need some different things from a house um, as much as we would never want to leave here. Um, and in my ideal world, I'll be able to keep this and have another home somewhere else, hopefully, fingers crossed one day. So that is still very much on our to-do list, the type of home that we want, whether we'll build, whether we'll buy an old property, whether we'll go for an oak framed, like border oak style home, who knows? But that is still very much on the cards because we know that we need more land, we know that we need a slightly different configured home, we know where we want to be situated. And so yes, it's very much something we're being quite realistic about. I think a lot of people say to themselves, like we did, oh my gosh, this is my forever home. And then reality, the reality is life changes and you learn different things that you might need, different requirements that you might have, and life progresses. And you think actually maybe this isn't the, um, maybe this isn't our forever home as much as we wish it could be. 
I think it will be very, very difficult for me to move from here. I think it'll be very, very difficult for us to move from here because this, ho this home is so special. I will say it until it's, I'm blue in the face. Every person that picks us up, drops us off, delivers something, comes to our home, comments on how special it is here. And that is not something that I am not aware of and it's not something that I haven't considered and it's not something that doesn't play on my mind so, so much. But I have to go back to what it is that I said um, about when you're decorating your home, you have to be sure that you've considered absolutely everything and you are confident in the fact that A, you know you're going to find somewhere that is going to bring a different dimension to your life. It may not be a better home, it may just be different and um, that's the thing that I think I'm most conscious of when people say, you know, gosh, are you really wanting to move? I'm like, it's not because I don't love it here. It's not because this isn't like my happy place where I've learnt so much about myself, become such a, like, I really love the person that I've become here. I love the home that we have made here. When I'm sat here looking into that bathroom that I designed, I'm like, I can't quite believe it. And so, it's not lost on me, I promise, but we do also know that there are different things that we need out of life and different chapters of our lives and hopefully that is what will be coming next. As I've said all along, we're not just moving for the sake of it, this will have to be a very, very, very special house and I just think it'll be such an exciting journey that we get to go on, but who knows when that will be? I have no idea, <laughs> but I thought I'd give you a quick update in this video just to bring you up to speed as well, because I feel like there's so much stuff going on at the house, like the wild turf is now down and um, all around the chicken coop, so it's gonna be really lovely to see that come to life. In fact, I'll pop a little video just about here. So this was the um, the day that they were starting to sort of take the, the turf up. And if for any reason that you don't remember what our garden to the side looks like, um, this is kind of what it will look like. We've used the same wild turf, um, except we will have little pathways and boulevards through the wildflower, and then we're gonna have a little bench situated so we can just sit and just look out over everything. I think it'll be really lovely. So anyway, that's the update, and um, I will see you guys in my next video.